Good morning, Habib. Good morning, everyone. Well, let's go ahead and begin. And what I want to do is I want to review some comments from the last broadcast. And then I want to jump into our presentation for today, which is the secrets to improving your listening skills. Uh, who else do we have? Rafael from Guatemala. Good morning, everyone. Well, let me uh, just share with you a, a couple of comments. Uh, one of the comments that I received this past week Someone said, your guest Carol was great in the last episode. Episode, Are you going to bring on more guests? And the answer is yes. Actually, this past week, I met with a couple of people through Zoom to share their ideas on some of my broadcasts, upcoming broadcasts. If you look at my Facebook, I talk a little bit about some of those topics. And if you're interested in joining and being a guest uh, on one of the topics, feel free to do so. Another question was, where do you do your recordings? Do you have a private recording studio? And the answer is absolutely not. And right now I'm broadcasting from my kitchen. So in case you hear a dog barking, well, we have three dogs here at home, a cow meowing, well, that's just home life. So that's where I do that here. The other question that came up the last time uh, since the last broadcast was, what do you do in your free time? You seem busy, but happy. Yes, very busy, but yes, very content. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, an experience I had last week with family and tie that into uh, today's uh, broadcast. See a few more people from Guatemala. Good morning, Marco. Ready? Marco says, I'm ready to take notes. Dottie says, uh, I, I'm able to take uh, tune in. Good morning again from Guatemala. Joseph says, I'm so honored when you say out my name. Absolutely. And one of the things that the purpose of a live broadcast is to bring you in to the conversation. I mean, if I weren't doing this live, you could just watch it later. And but this is a particular topic where I'm encouraging people to join in, to share their ideas and so forth. So let's then just get to the actual broadcast. You're going to hear me introduce myself. That's just part of introducing and jumping in. I'm gonna take a drink of water here. <clears throat> and I think we are about ready. All right, well, let's go ahead and begin. And again, throughout the broadcast, feel free to share your comments and so forth. Here we go. Hi, I'm Randall from Randall's ESL Cyber Listening Lab, providing tips on language learning, culture, and human development. And today is a really important presentation, a, a talk where I hope that you can engage in the presentation dealing with the secrets to improving your listening skills. And one of the things that I mentioned in the description is some of these ideas are right before our eyes, but we don't see them. So let's go ahead. And this presentation is both for students and teachers or anyone who is in, uh, interested in improving their listening skills. So some of the purposes today, number one, I wanna talk about the factors that affect comprehensibility. Why is it that sometimes I can't understand other people? The second point is to identify ways, and let me actually bring these points up so you can see these. There we are. All right, so again, the title of the presentation, Go Back, is The Secrets to Improving Your Listening Skills. And I mentioned just a minute ago, highlight the factors that affect why can we sometimes not understand? Identify ways to enhance listening skills. How can I make these skills even better? And then what I wanna do is I wanna discuss some technologies to actually increase your listening skills. Throughout this presentation, feel free to comment, share your experiences. Otherwise, why do a live broadcast if the audience is not brought in? We have a couple of other people, good morning. And if I don't pronounce your name exactly right, feel free to share. Here we have Brandon, hello from Columbia, great. All right, well, let's just get into the presentation here. 
First of all, again, I want you to think about these questions. Chime in, share your ideas. Number one, why do people not understand me when I speak in English? Why is it? Why is it sometimes people don't understand you? How do you feel when people don't understand you? Does it, does it give you a warm feeling inside when people don't understand exactly what you're saying? Or does it feel frustrating? And the other, the other idea that I want to share is, is what are some of the best ways to improve your listening skills? Feel free to share what is working for you to improve your listening skills. Well, let me share with you some general comment concepts to begin. Number one, listening and speaking are what I call reciprocal skills. In other words, you can't improve your, you can't improve your listening without improving your speaking. They really are woven together. They go together. They must be taught together. The other thing is testing listening is not teaching it. And what do I mean? Well, for example, if you're a teacher and you're giving your students a multiple choice test, well, that's what it's doing. It's testing with a, like an A, B, C, fill in the blank. That type of activity is testing, not teaching. And uh, what we want to do is try to focus on those skills that actually help with that. The last idea is just because you can't remember something doesn't mean you didn't understand it at the time you heard it. In other words, what is so frustrating is sometimes you might have a long listening passage, very long passage. And sometimes there's so much information that you understood the name. For example, you heard the name Joe, but later on in the conversation, there's so much to listen to and then you forgot. It doesn't mean that you didn't understand it when you heard it. It's just you forgot. And I think those are really important points to keep in mind. A couple of other, thanks for the broadcast. Yes, Daniela, listening to different accents. Carol says, hello, Carol, listening to different accents. That works well for me. I think that's a really good import, important point in improving those uh, listening skills. All right. Well, let's go on to some other ideas and let's talk about identifying those factors that affect your listening. And I'd like to begin with this. First of all, I'm going to show you a picture and you tell me what you see. Here we go. Take a look at that picture. Think about that. What do you see in that picture? All right. What did you see? Well, let's, let's, let's look at that. Let's go on and, and take a look at this. All right. How many tigers did you see? Well, that is the big question. So sometimes if you do not know what to look for, you become blind to the problems in front of you. In other words, especially for students, sometimes we talk about listening. Oh, we just need to listen. Peter says tiger. Uh, uh, we have Lorenzo, tiger and trees. Uh, another one, I see a lion. Uh, Peter says a tiger, right? But the question is, how many do you see? Now, let's take a look. Again, the idea is sometimes we're blind uh, and we can't see things be, uh, in front of us. Uh, another comment comes from Misa. I think sometimes listeners cannot understand because of the accent. Again, that's what Carol mentioned as well. All right, well, let's take a look at uh, some of these. Uh, ideas here. Uh, let me go back. Okay. Let's take a look at it. Now look carefully. It says the hidden tiger. So on the tiger are the stripes. It says the hidden tiger. And so what I'm trying to illustrate is if you know what to look for, whether it be in your grammar and your listening, then you can focus, right? And that's uh, the main point. So let's talk about some of the things that are right before our eyes and sometimes we don't see them. Number one is rate of speed, all right? Sometimes students say to me, Randall, native speakers speak too quickly. And I say, no, maybe you listen too slowly. And now students say, oh, Randall, are you saying it's my problem? Well, it's just that sometimes it takes time. <laughs> 
It takes time to process the language. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. So again, I'm Randall from Randall's ESL Cyber Listening Lab talking about developing listening skills. Feel free to share any of the comments that you might have regarding today's presentation. Now, with each of these points later in the presentation, I'm going to talk about how to address each one of them. So if, in fact, I'm having a problem with listening speed, what can I do about it? The next point is connected, and this is called acoustic blur. Sometimes, or we call them word reductions due to unstressed syllables, sometimes I feel like this. I don't know if you ever feel like you're, you have your you know, headphones on, you're listening to a native speaker or, or non-native speakers or anyone, and it feels like a train is just whizzing by you. So listen to this question and statement and think about what you hear. Here we go. Listen carefully. Jeet yet? No, Ju. Jeet yet? Jeet yet? No, Ju. Now, it sounds like, Randall, I have no idea what you're saying. So let's take a look at some of these. Jeet yet? No, Ju. Randall, slow it down even more. Did you eat yet? No, did you? So these are what we call word reductions. And in English, we often have many unstressed sounds. For example, I wanna, I have to, I need to. Do you wanna? Did you, did you, did you wanna go yesterday? So all of these sounds are what are called acoustic blur or word reductions. And too often, what I find too often in textbooks, they slow it down so slowly, did you go, that it no longer becomes natural. It's kind of like on my website when I'm interviewing some of my children in some of my recordings, they're not thinking about word reductions. It just comes out naturally. So in a little while, we'll talk about how you can address this. Another idea is, uh, again, be thinking about, here's another question I want you to think about. So what have you done to increase your listening speed and understanding of fast speech? Let's see what else we have. Elizabeth uh, mentions, students ask me to speak slower, but in intermediate classes, I refuse as I don't think I'm helping by speaking slowly because the bus drivers certainly won't and I want to develop listening. Absolutely, Elizabeth. I think that's a great point. A balancing teacher talk with native speech. Okay. Uh, Lorenzo says, I think acoustic blur is the most difficult part. I think it is. And I think some textbooks leave that out. But I think there are other textbooks that include that, the idea of word reductions. And there are some grammar books that include that as, as well. Uh, Carol says, I teach about word reduction. Students need to know it. Absolutely. And again, in a few minutes, I'm going to talk about how can we teach that a little bit better. Great comments. All right. So let's go on to the next point. We've talked about rate of speed. We've talked about acoustic blur. Okay. Ambient noise. This is just simply background noise. And it's interesting that most listening materials that are made for language learners just leave it out just because it is challenging. But certainly that's possible. It's certainly an element of good listening. The next idea is vocabulary, idiomatic expressions, and grammar structures. And sometimes what I find is that when students are learning vocabulary, they tend to learn one word here and one word there, and they're not really connected. So one of the things I would recommend is the following okay, is actually come up with a system, whether you're a student or a teacher, and I'll talk a little bit more about this in a few minutes, about words that are often connected. If you look at these examples, keep your nose clean. <laughs> keep your nose clean, okay? That means to stay out of trouble, all right? Uh, the other ones are uh, have your nose in a book, really focused. Keep your nose out of something thumb your nose at, pay through the nose, follow your nose, right? All of these are idiomatic expressions that use one single word. And one of the things I'll talk about a little later is about how to focus on 
idiomatic expressions by topic. So those are certainly important ideas. All right, let's take a look at the next one. The next one is lack of cultural knowledge. This is so important. We often don't think about this. That familiarity with the topic, with the culture, often helps learn, helps the learner draw on that knowledge for better listening and understanding. So let me give you an example here. Uh, and again, the idea is we tend to see the world through the lenses of our own experience. Uh, my, Misa says, to improve their listening skills, I ask my students to listen to songs and watch movies. All right, well, I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a few minutes and how to slow them down. Great comment, Misa. All right, so let's go now. Let's take a look at uh, the next point. And let me give you a specific example regarding this. Imagine, for example, you have a friend that says, hey, this morning I went to the bath with a friend. Now, when you, if you heard someone say that, hey, I went to the bath with a friend, what image are you going to, I mean, are you thinking of this? Actually, when you think about this sentence, it might make more sense to maybe the Japanese. For example, in Japan, they have what's called a Japanese communal bath. It's a sento, where in years past, people did not have baths in their homes. So they actually went to a, uh, an area, a place where they could, it was a building. They had a place where you could shower, a men's side and a woman's side. And you would sit on a little stool and wash yourself very carefully. And then, of course, with no clothes on, no swimming suit, you would actually get into a, like a hot jacuzzi. So in this particular topic, yes, we understand this morning I went to the bath with my friend, but it could have many different meanings. So listening is being affected not by the vocabulary, but by the actual cultural context. And Lorenzo says cultural knowledge is key for the IELTS test. Absolutely. And I think many tests try to take out cultural bias so that that type of information is not required by the student to understand, but that's not always the case. So a great co uh, comment, L Lorenzo. All right, uh, again, be thinking about yourself. What are some examples of culture that you think can affect comprehensibility? Again, we're talking today about the secrets of improving your listening skills. Sometimes we think about improving grammar and vocabulary but I'm also trying to address topics that sometimes are beyond our awareness, like acoustic blur or cultural situations. Another factor is, as I mentioned, I mentioned culture. Uh, the other thing is maybe limited exposure to random and variant speech paths. Now, Randall, what do you mean by that? I mean, I wasn't expecting that conversation to go that way. Now, let me give you an example of what I mean. Okay, sometimes, uh, and you, you can see the ice cream cone uh, there. Sometimes when we teach a language or we study a language, we have certain paths that we expect the conversation to go. For example, if you open up your uh, textbook, what is the first question that appears in the textbook? Probably, hi, what is your name? My name is Jose. Uh, how, how are you today? I'm fine. Thank you. But what if you're not fine today? What if you're feeling terrible? And one of the experiences I had when I was in South America over 30 years ago, I walked into an ice cream shop and I was expecting the conversation to go this way. Again, I was a beginner learner of Spanish and I walked up to the counter and I said, excuse me. I said that in Spanish, of course. He said, yes, how can I help you? Okay, that's that's starting out the way I'm expecting. I said, I'd like a ice cream cone. The man said, what flavor would you like? I mean, this is very predictable conversation. I said, chocolate. And uh, I said, chocolate. And uh, then he told me the price. And that's where the conversation began to unravel. In other words, what was happening in this particular case is that I handed him a very large bill. And at that point, he was not expecting that. 
I thought, hey, this is a natural part of the conversation. And he looked at me and he said, I do not have change. And this is where the train of my thought was coming off rails because I, I, I didn't know what to say. And at that point, there was another man in the shop that said, hey, sir, he was pointing at me. Hey, I can help you. I know the pharmacist across the street. So if you give me that bill, I'll walk across the street, get you change, and I'll be right back. And you can imagine what happened. I gave the man the bill. He walked out. And the, ice, and then the man, the owner of the ice cream shop, just shook his head. And my friend kept, came back in the shop and says, what's taking so long? And I said, I gave some money to the man, uh, a stranger. He went across the street to get an ice cream cone. And they just shook their head. Oh, Rand, Randall, how did you fall for something like that? So again, the idea of nonlinear the nonlinear layer and nature of our lives where instead of conversation going in the way that we expect, often things become unrailed. Uh, we have some other people from Brazil. Uh, yes, Lorenzo, he stole my money. Uh, you know, I wasn't expecting that. But again, when you practice English in the classroom and in the textbook, do you have all of these possibilities in a way that the conversation could evolve or implode. And that's what happened to me. So again, the idea of conversations going off course. All right. And again, at times life follows its own path, no matter how much we predict. And so as teachers and as students, you can practice and practice and practice certain paths of conversation, but the reality is nothing follows this clear linear path. The other thing is, as I think that sometimes listening activities sometimes distort and exaggerate the amount of information that even native speakers can process. It's kind of like, for example, with the TOEFL, TOEFL or the IELTS. Sometimes you read a passage, you listen to a passage, and then you have to blend it all together to give a response. It can be just so difficult. Imagine this. If one car is heading east at 80 miles an hour and another one westbound with a nail in the back left tire, what is the probability they will arrive at the same time on a full moon? Just sometimes we expect students to understand too much. It's cognitive overload. It's just too much to expect from students. Uh, another comment says, why can't I understand well? I can't, why can I understand well, but I can't speak well? Uh, those are really good comments. Thank you. Uh, and I think that sometimes, as I mentioned, is weaving the skills together. And I'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. Really good point. Uh, another comment here is, good morning. Great, great comments and thoughts. All right. Well, let's go on now to some of the other points I want to make. The other thing, a uh, point that I want to make in regards is sometimes learners can only say, I don't understand when they're lost in conversation. The reality is, is that learning the expression, I don't understand, has little meaning. It's kind of like you're talking with a native speaker, you're listening and listening and listening for five minutes, and then you say, I don't understand. Well, the native speaker has no idea. Was it the first minute? The second minute, the end of the conversation, sometimes we have no ability to pinpoint uh, to the native speaker what or, or other speakers uh, what part we do not understand. Again, I want you to think, feel free to share some additional comments. Uh, why do people not understand me when I speak? Uh, why do I, uh, how do you feel? How do you feel when people don't understand you? Uh, frustrated, so forth. And the other one's question is, what are some of the best ways to improve your listening skills, which I'm going to get to now? Because I think uh, those uh, uh, are important. Oh, here is Carol says, you are not on the ball like they were. Yes, uh, talking about my experience in the ice cream shop, I think I was just overwhelmed with a new language and, and trying to focus on the context of what was happening, that the man was probably stealing my money. Uh, it was just too overwhelming for me. So very, very difficult. Good comment, Carol. 
All right, so let's take a look at, okay, how in the world can we go about actually improving our listening skills? Uh, here's a, one more comment before we continue. Improving our English, thanks to you and La Paz. How about taking into account the culture of the language you're in, in, uh, acquiring? Absolutely, Julio. And I mentioned that a little bit earlier in the presentation of culture is so related to it. Uh, there's so many examples where that becomes critical to understand. Great comment. All right, well, let's take a look at, okay, so what can we do? Some of those factors you've talked about, Randall, get down to specifics of how we can improve listening skills, okay? Number one, when you do not understand what is the common, what are some of the common responses that we have? Number one, maybe we just, we just give up. I have no idea. Another thing is probably many of us are, are professionals of this, pretending to understand. So you listen to something, oh yeah, absolutely. And you have absolutely no idea what is going on, okay? But a better way is this, is learning to ask effective questions. Don't just simply say, I don't understand. Because if you say, I don't understand, it really makes the native speaker or the other person that you're speaking with very nervous because they're trying to interpret what you're getting at. So instead of doing that, how about this? Learning expressions to clarify, to restate uh, during a conversation. For example, you're listening to a telephone number and you hear the phone number 581-23... <coughs> and you don't hear the last two numbers. Instead of saying, I don't understand, perhaps repeating the part that you did understand. Excuse me? The number is 58123, and then draw that sound out so the native speaker knows exactly what you want to do. All right, there are many of these expressions that you can use, and what I'll try to do at the end of the broadcast is I have a list of these expressions that I'll put uh, attached to the notes for this broadcast within Facebook. All right, so these are really important things. And as teachers, you have to really be able to instill this technique in your students. Maybe coming up with a list of expressions. For example, hey, the, party's, the party is tonight at 830. And you didn't, you didn't pronounce that number clearly. And a student says, the party is tonight at eight. And you say, the party is tonight at 8.30. 8.30, right? And so that clarification, restating of ideas becomes extremely important. Let's see. Uh, Maisa says, sometimes people might not be educated enough to know idioms in their meetings. And this is why they might under, not understand your point. Absolutely. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Very good point. Uh, Understand the whole idea of the conversation, Lorenzo. Those are excellent points too. You have to be able to do that as well. And what I'm trying to share is some expressions that go beyond I don't understand. All right, the next idea would be choosing content within the linguistic reach of your students. Or if you're a student, choosing content that's really about what you can handle and Avoiding cognitive overload. In, in other words, what you're trying to do is choose content or material that is within your reach. And this goes back to my initial points of number one, of uh, re, uh, speed and acoustic blur. How can you handle, how can you manage that effectively? So one of the things I suggest is number one, select short pieces, short nuggets of listening content and slow playback down of any content you're showing with your students. So right now, what I want to do is I want to talk about three different uh, tools online that can help you enhance uh, listening skills for yourself or for language learners, your students. And I will be posting those not only in the video here, but in the comments to the show afterwards. So let's take a look at these because the first two, the video speed controller and um, lyrics training are connected in a very important way. So first of all, this is, let me simply say, each one of these tools 
you could spend a whole hour exploring it, experimenting with it, demonstrating it. That's not the purpose of my presentation, but certainly each one could be you know, talked about and discussed in more detail. This one is actually an extension. It actually is for a computer. So if you have a computer and you're using the Chrome browser, this is a, an excellent tool. So what you would do is it allows you to control the playback speed of video online. Now, many people might say, well, Randall, within YouTube, YouTube has its own video uh, speed controlled uh, uh, setting, and usually it's by 25% increments. So you can play it at 100%, at 75%, at 50%. But what if you want to vary it by just 5%? Well, this extension, again, you would go to the web store, Chrome web store. It is called the Video Speed Controller for uh, Google Chrome. And if you're watching YouTube or Netflix, and this is one of the great tools, is that if you would download this extension and the actual video control will appear in the top left of your screen, you can actually determine whether you want it to slow down by 3%, by 5%, by 10%. And again, the coolest feature, if you have this installed on your computer and you're watching Netflix, the same little graphic bar will appear so that you can control the playback speed. That is one of the things that sometimes we just, you know, the content that we're trying to listen to is just too far beyond our cognitive ability to process. So this tool is an excellent one to use. Uh, the example here is from YouTube. This is a video with my grandson. And uh, if you're watching that video on YouTube, then you can control the playback speed. Let's see if we have a couple of uh, other comments. Another comment is Magali says, it is not necessary to understand every single word. Absolutely, that's correct. But sometimes it's difficult to get the idea if you miss something. Yeah, that is, you know, if you're missing a particular word, some words are really not important. For example, if I say, hey, do you want to go uh, tonight? Yes, that word, did you say party? Did you say movie? But certainly you can clarify. Uh, I slow YouTube down to 75%. Thank you, Marcia. And Marcia, with this uh, extension within Chrome, you can slow it down to 95%, to, seven, uh, to 80%, to 85% without distortion. And that's sometimes students say, I don't want to slow it down to 75%. I want to slow it down to 90%. So that's a great idea. Uh, piano says you are stunning. Your teaching method helps me so much. Happy to hear that. Uh, Maisa says in Randall's listening lab, there are a variety of choices of all levels. I usually start with the medium. Yeah, I do have a variety there. Uh, Marco says when I start to work on listening skills, I came to the conclusion. I was really bad listener. Even my own language Focus is important. So Marco, hang on to this because this point, Marco, is something that I'm going to talk about at the very end. So important, Marco. Uh, thank you very much. You're excellent. Uh, another That would be good for pronunciation focus. Yes. Thank you, Elizabeth. And this is what's going to lead into my next point. The next point is a website called Speed uh, for Speed Training. It's called Lyrics Training. And many of you might be aware of this, but this, you can combine the tool I just showed you, the video controller, with this website as well. In other words, uh, you can go to the website. It has a list of all kinds of videos. So basically, the goal of this website is to take videos. I think there are 13 different languages, so you could be learning a number of languages. You select the video that you want from popular artists. Then what it does is it takes that video and combines with a gamifying activity, a game of gap filling, and I'm gonna show that to you. Then what you do is you go and you select the, the level, either beginner, intermediate, advanced, or expert. The difference is the number of gaps. So in other words, you need to fill in the gaps that you are missing.
Then after that, you would press the, to start the video. But if you notice at the top of my screen, it says write mode and choice mode. And the difference is the right mode is where you would actually type in the words you hear. The choice mode is that you actually select like a multiple choice. Much better for pre-literate like younger children or for students that you're not focusing on the, on the spelling. You're just focusing on do they understand the words. They click on it, the video appears here, and then you'll see here's to the ones that we, and this comes from the actual, from Maroon 5, from the video memories. In this particular case, you would choose the, uh, you would type in the word. In this case, you would have that multiple choice. But one of the point, important points I want right here in the screen, if you see my cursor, that's where that video speed controller that extension from uh, Google Chrome appears so you can slow it down. And that's one of the great features of combining uh, lyrics training plus the video extension. Let's see what else we have. Uh, Hefe, Hefe says, Randall, good morning. I've been following your project. And if I mispronounce your name, Please call me out on it. Please let me know how to pronounce that better. I think since 2007, I've been a big fan. Today, you are talking to tons of students overseas, online. It shows us a big evolution of this project. Have you ever thought, uh, ever thought the things would go this way? You know what? No. You know, many of things, I think that the evolution of what I've tried to do over the years has changed. I never thought that 22 years I would be doing the same thing. Thank you for asking. Uh, Elizabeth says 90% might help with final consonants. Yes, I, I think that the ability, and I, I think Elizabeth, you're addressing several different topics, but I think the ability to control the speed, variable speed can allow students to uh, process that better. Uh, Carol says, since the first day, I always recommend my students lyrics training and Randall's lab. So yes, feel free. If you're seeing other websites, you know of other websites or other tools that you have used with their students, please share with us. Uh, let's go on to a couple of ideas. This is actually the lyrics to the song of memories and the words in red are the actual words that in the song, you can hear that word reduction. Instead of saying, toast to the ones here today, they say, toast to the ones here today. And by slowing it down, students can hear that a little bit better. All right, a couple of other ideas. And Marco, don't let me forget your comment was very important near the end of the presentation. Is sometimes we need to learn of commonly used high frequency vocabulary. One of my favorite books, uh, I find this on Amazon. I found it used on e uh, eBay. I'm not sure to what degree you might be able to order this where you live. But the nice thing about this particular book, it organizes idioms by topic, money, uh, love, romance, colors, body parts, and so forth. Now, there is another website, and there are many, many websites, is the Phrase Finder. And the nice thing about this website, it actually talks about the origins of the idioms as well. For example, if you see many people are up in arms about many social issues this day, I think you would agree what we're seeing in the world. And the Webster's New World American uh, Idioms Handbook categorized things by idioms. Uh, so let's look at an example. Well, if you give the students a list, well, you have to do more than give them a list. And this was going back to, I think it was Lorenzo, if I remember correctly, says, hey, I can listen, but I, my speak is, speaking is not at the same level. Well, this is what teachers can do to help students. If you're introducing some vocabulary, in this particular case, about uh, losing items or about robbery or be something being taken illegally. Sometimes what I do is I create situations. For example, you have a friend who paid $600 uh, to a website that promised him near perfect English in 60 days or less. Now, you know as well as I, there's not going to be any website that's going to be able to keep that promise. And you notice negative reviews for the company complaining that the people don't, uh, that they don't keep their promises. 
But your friend says that you're just being jealous because his English is improving. Give your friend some advice using these idioms. So rather than taking different idioms of different topics, maybe putting them into a group, rip off. Clean out. Now, clean out does not mean to clean something. It means steal completely, make off, off with, take one so, someone for a ride. All of these are different expressions that can help students. So, so the idea is, is present students with a list, but the speaking part, again, connecting the speaking and listening will help students improve. All right. Uh, last few comments is expand your knowledge. Now, just a few minutes ago, and I know there were some comments made, is that in order for students to improve their listening, they need to broaden, or just people in general, you and me, broaden our knowledge of the world so that we, when we hear ideas in conversation, we know the topic. We're familiar with the topic. And so I often encourage teachers and students to expand your knowledge of culture and the world by reading uh, virtual museums. Uh, if visiting a museum is not possible, watching documentaries like on Netflix or Amazon about anything, listening to thought provoking podcasts that expose you to the world. One of my favorites is called Hidden Brain and making friends with other people. So certainly expanding your knowledge becoming more aware of information can be a great tool. The next thing is, and this is going back to Marco, I think what you were talking about is being patient and doing things well. And these are the last two comments I want to make. Again, I'm Randall from Randall's ESL Cyber Listening Lab. P feel free to share any comments that you might ha have about improving your listening skills. And the one thing has to do with being patient and enduring things well. Let me tell you a story. Uh, last week, I took my grandson and my daughter up into the mountains. It was his first adventure camping in a tent. Now, I don't know if you're nervous about taking a three-year-old in the mountains in a tent, not knowing of how he's going to respond. I mean, certainly I was a little bit concerned. I was a little bit worried, especially going to bed. And so we had two tents. My daughter and my grandson slept in one tent. I slept in the other tent. I felt, well, maybe I'll get some rest tonight. And then about 3 a.m., I could hear my grandson wrestling in the other tent. He was not going to bed. And I, I knew it was going to be really hard on my daughter. So a little bit uh, around 5 o'clock, again, the sun is not going to, we're kind of in a small little valley. I know the sun is not going to come up, crest the, the hill above us until at least seven o'clock. But I got out, I took my son out and we sat into a chair under these beautiful aspen trees, cuddle up together. And I just wished, please son, please rise. Because when the sun rises, it'll warm up. As much as I willed for that sun to rise, it took the amount of time that I was expecting. We sat in kind of in the cool of, well, you could say it was pretty cold until the sun crested. And what I'm trying to say in this particular idea is that sometimes, even if you do all of these ideas of, of trying to improve your vocabulary, practicing with your listening, increasing your listening speed, sometimes it takes time and patience and maybe also just having a realistic goal. Let's look at a couple of other comments uh, that we have here. That point is very useful. I'm, I tend to mind map at a certain topic, car repairs, so I can speak. I think uh, what Marco was saying, hey, I'm trying to improve my knowledge of uh, things so that I can be pre better prepared to understand videos and other content, okay? Once they were trying to sell a TV on a uh, way to learn English while sleeping. Well, yeah, sometimes there are many things that people try to suggest to improve their listening. Another question, Peter says, could you share this PowerPoint in your Facebook? I will try to share this in some format. Absolutely. So you can have that. Uh, another comment today, my students find reading a book is more difficult than spending time using their smartphone. Any suggestions to spark their interest to read? You know, that's a really important uh, point there. Is it 
is Rita uh, is because a lot of times students gravitate uh, to their smartphone. Maybe if you can't encourage them to read, maybe you can find also interesting documentaries or other topics or videos that might spark their interest because certainly listening to something, it can be much more uh, interesting for some. Uh, another one is Alvin says, good morning. I've just woken up. I started watching this broadcast. Well, again, I'm recording this live for any who want to watch this. Well, let me share with you the last comment that I want to point out. And this is kind of not what people are often expecting. And Stephen Covey was an educator, was a motivational speaker. And he said the following, the biggest communication problem is we do not listen to understand. We listen to reply. In other words, I think a lot of the times beyond vocabulary, beyond listening speed, beyond cultural understanding is sometimes when we are listening to other people, you know, you can see other people. If you're in a deep discussion, you can see their mind churning and they're not listening to what you're saying. They're really just preparing a reply because they're thinking, well, in one minute, they're going to be finished. And then I'm going to unload on them my own ideas. And I really believe that one of the key points of any type of listening, anything that we can do to help improve listening, to help improve skills, to improve communication with the world, especially in turbulent times today when there's so much going, you know, with the pandemic, with social uh, injustice issues. A lot of people want us to simply step into discomfort, listen to their feelings. And so the idea of listening to understand people is much more important than listening to reply. I want to thank you for joining this presentation today. Again, some of you had comments about getting the PowerPoint, uh, getting links to some of the materials that I recommended. Uh, feel free after the broadcast as well to share additional comments that you might have regarding the topic. Also, I look forward to having other presentations coming up. If you're interested in participating, I really, to be honest, enjoy speaking with guests. So if you have, if you'd like to be a guest or you have someone you'd like to recommend to participate as a guest, feel free to share. Um, a couple of, Megali says, I asked my students to record their voices. Absolutely. That's another great point of doing that. And Megali, thank you very much for joining. So I, again, I'm signing off now from here from Utah. Thank you very much for joining the broadcast and feel free to share any comments right after we end today. All right. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day. And please let me know if the comments that I shared were useful to you. Take care.